Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Okay, today, this video is for... Sorry about that. This video is for coaches. It's for parents. It's for anyone that works with hitters. What I want to talk about is giving the hitter or hitters what they need individually and not just what you want to teach them. Before we get more into today's instructional video, this video is brought to you by Rocket Sports. Rocket makes top quality baseball gear and equipment. We use all of their stuff with our Antonelli baseball teams. If you'd like to learn more, check out rocket.com, click the link in our bio or in the description box below. So this is something that I'm always trying to be mindful of. And I see this a lot with coaches, is that if 10 different players come in to see them, they teach what they want to teach and not what that individual hitter actually needs for their swing. And so it becomes a very cookie cutter approach where every pit hitter, no matter their age, their experience level, their success, their failures, uh, their story, is just taught the same exact thing because, well, either that's just what the coach knows and so we're just going to do this. It's like, it's like a factory. You just come in and you, you know, they work on the same thing and they get you out. And you come in, you work on the same thing and they get you out. You come in, you do the same drills, they get you out. Right? It should not feel like a factory. Every single player is different. So be mindful of that as a coach, or at least that's what I'm mindful of, right? You can do what you want. I'm just giving you my experience and what I think is helpful. But be mindful. I'm always trying to be mindful that I don't want to just teach what I want to teach, but I'm going to try to teach what that individual player needs for their swing. And so how do you know? I think the first thing is you ask questions. So when a hitter comes in to work with me, the first thing I ask every time, and I usually have the player and usually a parent, is I'll ask the player, what is, why are you here? What is it that you think that you need to work on? And they'll tell me. Now they're not always 100% right because most of them will go to mechanics. I'm talking about mechanics. Okay, not if they've been successful or they failed, but I'll ask them. And a lot of them will go to mechanics, you know, oh, I'm dropping my hands, oh, I'm stepping out, oh, I'm jumping, or I'm stuck back, or, you know, I'm pulling my head and my shoulder. And that at least gives me an idea of what they think is the issue is. And what I do from there is that I'll put them on video. We always do an, an assessment of the player. I put them on video. We may use Rapsodo. We may use Blast Motion. And so then I'm able to show the player, I'm able to see what they're actually doing. I'm able to show the player what they're actually doing when it comes to their body and mechanics. And then we can go from there. But it always starts with a discussion. What's going on? Why are you here? They'll tell me, usually again mechanically, what's going on. I'll show them, right? We, we, we look at their swing. I show them their swing. I start to explain some of the things that either they told me or what I see, or both usually. And now we're, we're moving in a direction where it's not just me just teaching whatever it is I want to teach. And I'm able to use what the player thinks, feels, um, and I think the player get a better understanding. But that's not just the most important thing, not, not mechanics, right? The other thing is success and failure. What's going on in the actual game? which I think is really important to understand. Because if the player in a game is struggling with something, or the player in a game is hit great, right? They've hit great. Now I understand if it's a 10-year-old player and he says, yeah, I'm hitting great. You know, certain 10-year-old hitters can hit great without a swing that's optimal, especially if they're an athlete, right? They're, they're able to out-athlete other players, or maybe they're just big and strong. So I'm not saying if a player says, oh, things have been going great, that you just say, okay, we're just going to flip the ball and hit it and get on out of here, right? I'm not saying that either, but I think it's important to understand if the player is struggling or if the player is playing great. Um, 
and then what is happening? What is if the player's failing, the player's struggling? What's happening? Where are the balls going? Are you getting jammed? Are you getting it off the end of the bat? Are you rolling over? Are you slicing the ball? Are you popping up? Are you swinging and missing? Are you following balls straight back? Because that all gives me some insight into what could be going on with the player. The other thing is, right, there's a lot that goes into this. And the overarching thing is communicating, asking questions. I ask the player and I ask the, the, the parent usually um, separately. I ask the player and then I can ask the parent. Um, if I ask the parent first, a lot of times um, they'll say something and then maybe the player will say, I don't want to say anything because my parent just said that I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing awesome, but I'm not doing awesome. Or the player, the parent says, I'm, I've been terrible, but I feel like I'm doing pretty good. So I'll ask, I usually ask the player first and ask them separately. But the other thing is that if a player feels like they're doing really, really well, right? And they are doing really well. They don't just feel it. They are doing really well. They've had the best year of their life, right? Or what, whatever it is. They, they feel really good about their swing. And maybe there's you know, a small thing here or there that they want to work on. But overall, they feel really great. And they come in. And you don't ask. You just go. And you start cookie cutting and just teaching what you want to teach. The same thing that you teach all the other players. But that player, whatever that thing is, right? Maybe that player does things a little bit uniquely, but that is what works for them, right? That's what works for them. And you try to change that because you ask no questions, you know nothing about the player, you don't know if they're successful or not, and you're just gonna teach what you teach, that could be a problem. And I ran into this as a player a lot as I got older. When I got into professional baseball, because when you get into professional baseball, you start working with a lot of hitting coaches. When you're younger, you might have one coach, maybe two coaches. When you're older, when you're in pro ball or maybe even college, you might have multiple hitting instructors. When I was in professional baseball, there's a lot of levels. And so you could be having a new instructor every year. You could have multiple instructors every year. When you go to spring training, it's not uncommon for you to be hitting in the cage and have the big league hitting coach come over and talk to you. And then the AAA hitting coach come over and talk to you. And then the next day, the hitting coordinator comes over and talks to you. And then the next day, one of your managers sees you hitting, he comes over and talks to you. And then you've got the, the single A hitting coach who just happened to be walking by and he saw you hitting, so he's going to come over and talk to you. And then the next year you're going to transition to a new organization and guess what? It's going to happen all over again. This is the first time I really saw this happen. And I had a lot of coaches that asked no questions, knew nothing about you, right? Maybe looked at your stats, but stats don't always tell the whole picture. And so you get into the cage and then they just start teaching what they want to teach and not what you need. And I had a lot of times where, if you look at the back of my baseball card, if they haven't all been thrown out already, you're going to see certain years I did really well and certain years I really struggled. And as a professional player, really as any player, but as a professional player, I'm working on my swing all the time. And like I said, I've had a lot of hitting instructors. And so if you look at 2008, I struggled big time. And I had 20 hitting coaches trying to tell me how to hit and trying to work on different things. A lot of things didn't work at all. Certain things worked. I struggled big time for most of my career, most of my year, some people say most of my career. I struggled big time in 2008, and I tried everything until I ran into a coach, Sean Wooten. Sean explained things differently, told me to do a couple things. Man, did it click. One of the reasons why I got so passionate about hitting, because I realized how important mechanics are. And so Sean was able to get me to do certain things. And those certain things allowed me in the last month of the season to hit over 300 with five home runs, I think. I only had two the entire season. And so he got me doing things that were really successful for me. And I got called up the next month. And the first thing when I got to the major leagues, the first thing that happened is after my first game, I was told that the next day come in early because we're making swing changes. We're going to change all this stuff, right? And so for me, that's an example of just teaching what you want to teach and not teaching what the player needs and not having any idea what I've been through that year. 
no idea what I'm working on, no idea what I've done in the past. And so we went back to doing things that I was doing when I was struggling that I personally just didn't like, right? I just didn't like it. And so this happened multiple times in my career. Five years later, a couple years later, 2011, I go to the Washington Nationals. And so I'm back working with Sean and working on a lot of the things that we worked on that year. And I had a great spring training the year before I went to that, a great spring training doing all these things. Felt amazing. Broke my hand. Didn't play a game during the year. Next year went to the Nationals. So the, the last time I had played was great. I think I led the big league team in, in, in hitting in spring training, in big league camp. I go to the Nationals. I get into the cage. They really know nothing about me except for the last stats I had in 2000. I don't even know what year it was. Late 2000s weren't great. But they don't know that I've been working on things and changed things. They don't know what worked for me, what didn't work for me. And so they said immediately, without really asking any questions, hey, this is what I want you to do. And they just start teaching what they want to teach and not what I need. Again, they might think I need this, but they don't know any, They don't know what I've done. They don't know what I've done to be successful, unsuccessful. Have I been struggling? Do I feel great? If I feel great and you walk in, all of a sudden the coach says, no. No, 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 we're going to do this and this and this and this and this. What do you think that's going to do to the player mentally? And so a lot of the things they wanted me to do were things I had already tried to do and I couldn't do them. I, they didn't work for me. And I kind of fell apart there for a little bit also. And this really wasn't supposed to be a story about me, but I think, you know, I have a lot of experiences with this. And things didn't get better that year. If you look at my 2011 stats, I played really, really well that year. I was hurt a lot, but I played really well when I was on the field. And it wasn't until I got into the season and I was struggling, right, because I'm doing all these things again that I know don't work for me. And my coach or my manager said to me, I don't care mechanically what you're being told to do because you look uncomfortable. He said, I want you to literally wiggle the bat three times and get into whatever position you feel best about. Not what you think I want you to get in, not what you think you know, another coach wants you to get into, just get into the position that you feel best and I want you to hit, that's it. And so what did I do? I literally went out that game, I wiggled the bat three times, I got into the position that I had felt best about, what I came in the spring training with, what I felt um, helped me most in 2010 spring training and I, all of a sudden I start hitting. Right? I just start hitting and I hit pretty much the entire season. Why? Not that coach sat down with me and talked to me about all these things but ultimately he gave me permission to not just try to do what people are teaching but I'd been successful doing certain things and he allowed me to do what worked for me. If you go see a coach and nothing's working, absolutely. You tell that coach, nothing's working. I don't know what I'm doing, right? I've been rolling over, I've been flaring balls, I've been swinging and missing. Okay, that now allows the coach to understand that and he should teach a little bit differently than if that player came in and said, I've been an all-star, you know, I'm an all-American, um, you know, I've been drafted in the first round, um, I hit 340 last year in short season ball with 20 home runs, that'd be a great season. That should allow the coach to coach a little bit differently. All right? So, long, long video. I wasn't intending it to be this long and kind of go all over the place. But bottom line is don't just teach what you want to teach. Teach what the player needs. That's all I got. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills. We break down the exact mechanics that you're going to want to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.